welcome to The Week in Geek, your new comic preview for Wednesday, April 13th. I'm Mike Ortiz. I am the Chris Brown. And uh, so what do, you, what do you got this week? Uh, well, my topic this week um, is, uh, and everyone's going to laugh at me this week, because we got not one, but two Jonathan Hickman books this week. So I'm going to go, my top pick is Shield, uh, Shield Infinity. I'm excited about this book. I think Shield's been a really interesting tale. That first was seven issue series that they did. I liked how they have you know Da Vinci and Tesla and all these characters were the you know original uh, members of Shield. And now you know we just had everything that goes on in Secret Warriors. Uh, the previous issue where it looks like uh, Nick Fury had to go on a mission for Da Vinci, who he doesn't even know who it is. He goes and finds the body of Tesla, then tells Da Vinci, "I didn't find anything." Hmm. Okay, so I am really excited to see what's going on in this uh, Infinity. I think Hickman is doing just such a great job with those three books, and they're now coming together. I don't get the Secret Warriors, and I'm not even always positive I know what's going on in S.H.I.E.L.D., but it's it, a good book. It is fun, and they're coming together. They're finally, we're starting to see where it's going in FF a little bit. Nice. Uh, what do you got there? My top pick uh, is, is a little bit different. It's Sweets, issue 5 from Image Comics. Uh, this is a, a great creator-owned book. It's a, a crime drama set in New Orleans before Katrina. Okay. Uh, the artwork is fantastic. This book, um, you know, it's odd making the final issue my pick, but I really don't hear a lot of people talking about this book, and I really think it deserves a lot more attention. It's not one of those ones that sold out and went for 50 bucks on, on eBay. It's a, a good, solid image book, five issues that sort of were flying under the radar. Rich it's, Johnson must not have saw anything yeah. in the numbers, so he no didn't one, feel a reason to suck Sweet's dick. They didn't, uh, they didn't pay him off, I guess. But the, the premise is basically uh, some cops in New mm -hmm. Orleans who have to solve a, a serial killer crime before Katrina hits and wipes out all their evidence. And Okay, and but they know it's coming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, okay. they know, and so there's a time. There's a deadline, and it's it's if you if you're a fan of shows like Homicide or The Wire or that okay. show uh, I think it's pronounced Treme that's set in New oh, Orleans, yeah. morally compromised cops who are trying to do the the right thing, but you know at the end of the day they're just they're just human beings with problems. Uh, the artwork is fantastic. It's all got this kind of yellowish tone to it. Uh, oh, yeah, this that's artist good. Cody. Chamberlain uh, is, is I've never heard of him prior to this, but uh, I can easily see this guy getting snapped up by by vertigo, especially um, It may not be easy to find all the issues But if you can I recommend it and obviously it's an image comic, so it's all going to be collected Absolutely. If, you, if you miss it now uh, make sure to uh, order it when it comes out because uh, I think it's worth it If you're a fan of criminal or any of the crime war that's out there. I think this is uh, just about as good as that Awesome yeah, I don't know why that one's not. Uh, yeah. There was a little bit of hype when it was first coming out. People were talking about yeah. it, and then didn't hurt to hear anything else. I mean, it's it's one, it's taken quite a while for the five issues to come out. That certainly never um, helps. That but, that uh, could be part of it. But yeah, give it a shot. All right. So next up here, I've got uh, you know I'm just going to jump right into it. Secret Warriors. Let's mm -hmm. just let's just talk about it. We just talked about Shield there. Um, I'm really curious to see where this book is going, considering the last issue. You know, Da Vinci sits at this table with. Uh, Baron Strucker and all these people, and they're all looking at, you know, the good guys are looking at the bad guys, and the bad guys are looking at the good guys, and nobody knows who Da Vinci mm -hmm. is, and some things kind of start happening. You know, of course, the bad guys are up to no good, but we don't know what Da Vinci's up to. Hmm. And clearly, he had to know something was going to happen. So, I'm really looking forward to Secret Warriors, and I think that one's going to be fun. Um, next up, we got uh, New Avengers. I've been liking that book, you know, right on here, The Race to Save Mockingbird. You know, a couple issues ago, uh, Mockingbird gets shot. Looks like, you know, maybe she's dead again. And they just brought her back. Come on, guys. So it looks like we're going we're gonna to get to that, and, and hopefully uh, the race to save Mockingbird is on. Then uh, we got Journey into Mystery, uh, number 622. This was previously Thor. Has now become Journey into Mystery. It's going to follow the adventures of young Loki. And, you know, they, they fear it's selfed it all up. So it's, you know, the cover's looking like it's going to be a major piece or something. And obviously the, the Norse gods are going to be a big part of that. Um, got a fun little Twilight zone kind of opening <laughs> here. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And I'm, I'm hoping Journey into Mystery is going to be a, a fun book. Karen Gillan, I think, has written some, some good stuff recently. So Then we got uh, Black Panther, uh, The Man Without Fear. I think this book has been okay. I've been kind of liking it. Black Panther versus... Versus Luke Cage. 
So, uh, yeah, he had, uh, you know, in the last issue, Spider-Man was following him around. He's like, well, Luke kind of wanted me to, you know, just make sure everything's going okay. And Chala didn't kind of like that he was being watched by the Avengers. So <laughs> this should be uh, kind of interesting. Battle of the Black Exploitation Stars. Yeah, re- absolutely. Then, uh, all right, we've got uh, Flashpoint, Road to Flashpoint with Flash number 10. Uh, it's, this book has been late. You know, there was uh, the last one was a couple months ago, but that ending of the last one was pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm curious to see where this is going and, and lead us into to our big flashpoint, which is going to be DC's big, big thing. Um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Now we got Superboy. Uh, it's a part of Reign of Doomsday. I've not been reading Reign of Doomsday, so I don't even know how I'm going to... Eh, if it's Superboy fighting Doomsday, I can probably get down with that and follow it and be okay. I have really been liking this book. It's been written by Jeff Lemire, who's also doing Sweet Tooth, which we have both said we, we enjoy there. No, I've never read Oh, you haven't read Sweet Tooth? I thought you were reading Sweet Tooth. No. Oh, I read the first well, issue and said you. I'll pick it up and trade and never did. Sorry, well, it's, it's written by him and it, it's been pretty fun, so looking forward to that. Uh, then we get to our creator-owned portion of the show. Uh, check out that creator-owned blog uh, written by Chris Smits. Um, unwritten here has been a really, really fun book. It's issue 24. Uh, we have two years worth of Unwritten so far, and in the previous issue it finally started to reveal a little bit more of what, what the skinny is and what's going on. So I'm... I'm Interested in reading this and seeing where it's going. Looks like this issue is getting a little bit more uh, more silly here. We've got that rabbit that everyone was talking about from uh, a few issues past that, that everybody liked. So hopefully that's fun. Um, and then uh, Walking Dead Survivor's Guide. Now this isn't necessarily. It's not an issue. It's no story. It's just to catch up a little bit on your on your characters, so you know who everybody is. And this would be a great jumping on for anyone who has not been keeping up with the book, or. For just uh, those of you who want to remember who the characters are. Sometimes, you know, I, even myself, I'll look and like, wait, who is that again? Oh, okay, that's right, because there have been so many characters and so many different things. So this is a nice little refresher just to catch if you up. If you're a fan of uh, Handbook to the Marvel Universe and DC's Who's Who, this is basically the Handbook to the Walking Dead Who's Who. Yes. A to C in this mm-hmm. one. Aaron to Carl is, is what this issue covers. So that's what I'm looking at. That's what I'm excited about this week. Well, yeah, what do you got there? Uh, well, next up for me is Amazing Spider-Man 658 with a, a nifty black and white FF costume cover. Uh, Dan Slott's been doing a great job on this book. Uh, I like how it is uh, incorporated into the FF. This one has uh, guest stars by the Fantastic Four, some fantastic artwork by, uh, I believe, Marcos... No, it. it's not. It's uh, Javier Polito. He, uh, oh, doing a very good imitation. Of it Marcos looks like Martin. Marcos Martin. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's it's a lot of fun. It looks like there's some dimension hopping in here and giving Spider-Man uh, a kind of adventure that he he wouldn't have by himself, which is why I like him on right. the Fantastic Four and like him in the Avengers because uh, he's a, a good character that is uh, useful in a variety of situations, including death. So uh, Ultimate Spider-Man 157, the uh, the death of Spider-Man continues. Um, I've said many times this is a great book. Uh, I actually am getting to the point where I'm thinking, I think issue 160 is going to be the polybag special death of okay. issue. Uh, you know, Bendis has, has got a lot on his plate. He's announced that he's not going to be doing conventions. I'm hoping that Marvel's actually going to pull the plug on this book. It may be doing well, but put Bendis on another title, it'll do well too. Agreed. I think that would be a really nice farewell for the Ultimate Universe to kill someone, make them stay dead. You can still bring the books back from time to time. Sure. You know, just the way that they, they've done with with uh, some other kind of imprints. and um, Absolutely. But yeah, I think if they kill them off and have the balls to do that, uh, end the book that began the line and, and leave it dead, I think that would be a great thing for them to do, even though I love the book. Uh, have all the issues, it's, it's been great. Uh, tying into that is the Ultimate Avengers versus New Ultimates. I've I've not been too thrilled with this. No. I'm actually only picking this up because of the tie-in, just on the off chance that there's some stuff going on in here. I love Lionel Francis Yu's artwork, but um, Mark Millar has not been doing so well on the Ultimate books for me lately. I've tried several of them. They're they're kind of iffy. It it feels like his heart's in his creator own stuff, which I actually do still like quite a bit. His heart's in his wallet. And his wallet place. is fatter with his creator own stuff because he can eventually pitch that as a movie, which is all the only reason he's doing this stuff anyway. You know what? I have no problem with horrors, but this is one particular horror that I do have a problem with. Mark Miller bugs me. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> Next up, speaking of horrors, no, I'm just kidding. 
Uh, is John Burns next men? He's not uh, as whorish as he used to be. I, mean, I don't think he's ever been a whore. No, no. He's um, just a self-aggrandizing a-hole. That's different. Not necessarily yeah. a whore. But he does that for free. You <laughs> so touche. He's not a whore. Uh, but you know, overall, I've, I've liked this book. Uh, it definitely has the feel that it used to have. A lot of times, as we've mentioned before, creators come back to uh, something yeah. years later, and uh, and the magic is gone. I think uh, I think Burns still still got it on this book. Uh, say what you want about you know the things he says online. Say what you want about it, any of his mainstream stuff or even the other stuff for IDW. Again, this is a project that was dear to his heart back in the day. Yes. I think it's dear to his heart now, and I think that shows. It's uh, good. I, I like the book. It. it it has the same feeling as when the book ended all those years ago, right. and that had taken a little twist from where it began. Yeah. But at least he's continuing from from where it, it went, and I do feel like it, he's doing a decent job with it. I like it. And, and kind of continuing on the the projects that uh, that are close to the creator's heart is uh, Casanova. Uh, this is Gula. These are still reprinting the, the Image Comics. This is with art by Fabio Moon. Uh, this is the last issue before new stuff starts. Okay, fine. Uh, this this has been great. I mean, I, I love Casanova. It's weird. It's kind of wacky. It's, it's a weird book. It's out there. Um, but it's, the it's, Bond it's, Moon artwork is... Oh, God. Uh, this is, I mean, it, it's, it's a beautiful book, even made more beautiful in color. Uh, yeah. I didn't think I would like it because I, I really either, did like the black and white, but... Yeah, it's better, and I can't wait to get, get some new Casanova coming down the well, pike. It was black and white. It had a color, but it was a singular yeah. color. And, but each one had its own color. Yeah, the first yep. one was green. The second one was blue. They yep. were going to do the entire rainbow until Jeff John stole the rainbow. Oh, yeah. I, think, uh, I think they're not allowed Jeff to Jeff John doesn't own though. Skittles. <laughs> he probably He'll Take could. it easy. Well, maybe. <laughs> um, then we've got uh, Uncanny X-Force, like I've mentioned before. This is a, a really a fun book. Uh, the second story arc's not been as strong as the first right. one. Part of it might be the uh, the absence of Jerome Pena. Uh, this uh, Assad Ribic artwork is great, but it's not. It just doesn't have kind of the visual density that, that it had before. Maybe I'm not as interested in the characters. It's got Deathlock in it. Um, I don't know. This is this is a book that's been solid, but a little bit shaky. This this is the point where books tend to start getting dropped. But uh, for the moment, I'm still on board. We'll see if, uh, if Remender can kind of turn it around. On a similar vein is Batman and Robin number 22. Uh, like I had yeah. mentioned previously, I was all set to drop this book. I gave it a shot because of uh, Tomasi and Gleason, who did a great job on Green Lantern Corps. Um, I didn't know if they would translate well to Batman, but they did on their first issue. I gave, yeah. it, gave it a shot as kind of a lark. Second issue, also pretty solid. Uh, I'm, I'm liking it overall. This is the one... Okay. Oddly, that is most still most likely to be dropped. I've, I've got uh, several Batman books. I might have right. my Batman fix without this, um, but I really do like Damien. I think he brings a lot to the the Batman mythos, and so far this has been pretty solid. So uh, for the moment, I'm I'm still giving it a shot. We'll see how that goes in the long run. Ah, uh, the Incredible Hulk's awesome I, cover. I had said before I, I was three issues behind. I caught up on those three issues. Didn't really like them that much. Okay. Thinking about dropping it, but then, yeah, we've got a, a completely different story here. They're out of Savage good. Land. Uh, the cover's fantastic. It's got Tom, Tom Grummet artwork. Uh, I know um, Paul Pelletier is coming back to the book in a, a few months, so they keep finding little ways to grab me. They'll give me a couple of crappy issues in a row, and then they'll give me one that's pretty good. And you know what? I guess that's good enough. Just when you try to get off, they pull you back in. And uh, and that is pretty much all I've got. Right on. Anything else? Anything else of note we wanted to mention? I'd like to maybe mention that the Fantastic Four 588 second printing is in. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll show you that there. Uh, this actually has a script book in the back. Oh, wow. So it's that silent issue, but it's got the script. So if you, if you want to kind of go back and read that again, if you want your heart broken by Ben Grimm uh, again... You can all have it broken uh, silently and with the script. You can now uh, do it with uh, words and no pictures. Yeah, indeed. So with that, I believe that is your Week in Geek.